hi welcome back to my channel so in today's video you would already know if you read the title i am going to be sharing my journey with ivf so about a mix of my fertility journey and the whole process i went through with ivf if you're new here you probably didn't know i conceived my daughter lucy via ivf my husband and i rudy uh, we were trying to conceive for nearly three years when we um, embarked on our whole, you know, fertility journey back in January of 2019. So I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm going to try to keep everything as short as I can because I feel like there might be a lot that I'm going to be saying today. I'm going to begin with once we embarked on our whole fertility journey. So like I said, we were trying to conceive for nearly three years at this point. Doctors normally say that if you try to get pregnant and it's unsuccessful within a year, uh, you should seek professional help. So that's exactly what we did. And I want to say it was between January and February of 2019. We had consultation with our first fertility doctor. We had to do a lot of tests in order to begin fertility treatments, in order to see if there was something going on with myself or Rudy. So I did a number of blood tests and a couple of tests and Rudy had to undergo the same thing, a few blood works, and he had to get a semen analysis as well. And at the end of the day, there was nothing wrong with either one of us. So there is a plus side to that sense hey it's great nothing's wrong with us right but at the same time it's like then why are we having such difficulties getting pregnant it didn't give us much answers so once we completed all of the mandatory tests then we were able to begin with iuis so iui is pretty much like being inseminated with the sperm and we went through two cycles of um, IUIs and they were both obviously unsuccessful. So um, that is when um, one of the nurses had suggested, I know that when we first went in for our first IUI, I believe, the nurse, or it was the doctor, I can't even remember who it was, but she had even suggested for us to get on the IVF waiting list. This was when I was like, no way. We're not gonna need IVF. IVF is not for us. We're going to get pregnant sooner or later. In my clinic, IVF had a huge demand and a long waiting list. So I believe at that point, which was around um, March when we did our first uh, IUI, I think the wait list for IVF wasn't until June. And so yeah, we totally didn't do it. We didn't get on the waiting list or anything because I was so sure we were going to get pregnant via IUIs. So anyways, both um, cycles for IUIs were a fail and a nurse had uh, recommended I get back or I get on the IVF waiting list. Fast forward to um, May, April, April. Um, yes, yeah, she recommended uh, IVF waiting list and by then the waiting list wasn't until about September, October. It was so disappointing hearing that because I feel like with fertility treatments and just trying to conceive in general when you're having such difficulties, time is like such a factor. Um, I know for myself personally, I felt like I had a time clicking telling me that I was running out of time and I was in a constant pressure of needing to get pregnant. Not only because of my age, but because everybody around me was already having children, already had multiple children, and of course friends and family constantly asking me when we were going to have children. And it's a lot of pressure and it's something, people don't really try doing that to be mean, but it comes off very heavy for the person who might be trying to conceive and is not successful in that department. So finally, in July, we had our consultation with our IVF doctor. I absolutely loved him. He was so, so, so wonderful. And um, I ended up having to do one last test in order to be able to get on officially the IVF waiting list. And we managed to do that that same appointment, which was amazing, perfect timing, and um, everything looked good. 
and from there we were set um, for IVF. We just had to wait pretty much for our time. And we were so lucky and so fortunate that Rudy's health insurance gave us one free round of IVF. So that does not mean that we paid nothing because <laughs> we did. We still had to do a copay. We had to pay an additional for ICSI, which ICSI is when they, um, with a needle, get a sperm and manually insert it into the woman's egg. So they fertilize it that way and it has a higher success rate in fertilization. So we paid an additional cost for ICSI and all of my hormone medications for the stimming was not covered through the insurance. So it was a good lump sum of money and you cannot do payments and everything is paid up front when it comes down to IVF. So lots of pressure there. I can't remember exactly at this point um, how long you do the stemming. So um, I think you do 10 days worth of injections depending on how your eggs are responding to the medication. So now we're flashing forward to September. I, Rudy and I had an IVF class and they pretty much go through all the medications you're going to be doing and how to do it and how to properly like administrate the injections because guess what you do all these injections yourself at home i don't know how doctors feel comfortable giving you all these things to do at home because i was like um i did a lot of preparation when it came down to us uh, starting ivf i watched so many videos on youtube I watched so many different women and their journeys and it was so so beneficial to me because when we went to our class I felt like I knew 99% of the things that they were talking about so then we didn't start stemming which stemming is when I started my hormone injections to grow my follicles and by stemming they want all or as many of your follicles to grow so that we can get them during the egg retrieval process um actually i just want to do a quick disclaimer before i move any further i'm not a professional i'm just sharing my experience and probably some of the things i'm saying is in like the correct terms to so many things i'm probably going to say things wrong but as i said this is my journey this is what i went through and my personal experience I started injections October 2nd, 2019, and the I did two shots a day. The first one was Follistem, which is um, an injection pen. It was so easy to use. The needle was so tiny and so skinny, I didn't even feel it. Um, I gave that to myself in the mornings, and then at nighttime, I did a Metapure. Uh, Rudy injected me with those, um, and they were all on the belly. I have my notebook here that I keep referring back to because I wrote everything uh, during my journey so it's really nice to have to reflect back back on while i'm doing the stemming i was going to the doctors every other day i believe um so that way they can keep track of um, my follicles growing and and they're measuring them too because um don't quote me but i think um once the follicles get to about 25 mm is when they're coming pretty close to bursting which would mean ovulation and they don't want that oh i also forgot i'm like so like scrambled right now um before i even started my cycle of ibf they had me on birth control i i believe i was on birth control for about two to three weeks and they put you on birth control because they're trying to control your cycle they don't want you to ovulate before they're ready to have you ovulate because once you're doing IVF, when you do ovulate is when they're going to retrieve your eggs. So yeah, I was on birth control and then I came off of it right before I started stemming. And so now come to day five of stemming, which is the injections, um, I started another injection which was called Ganarelix. Ganarelix is a injection that stops you from ovulating. So throughout the whole stemming, uh, my doctor had nothing but great things to tell me. My um, follicles were growing properly. They were growing. They were even a day ahead towards the end of my stemming. And I ended up doing injections for exactly 10 days. And then um, you do, I think it's by the 10th day, 
you do your trigger shot, which is going to trigger your body to ovulate. And then 24 hours later, you go in for your surgery, which is the egg retrieval. So we went in for my egg retrieval, I believe it was October 13. And the surgery went well. Um, by that point, you're pretty bloated, your tummy's pretty bruised, and you're probably very uncomfortable because you have so many follicles that are growing and it gets really tight in your ovaries. And I think I forgot to mention, but with this IVF cycle, we were going to be doing a fresh embryo transfer, which means that once the egg is collected and it is fertilized, and if the embryo is um, looking good by day five, whichever embryo it may be is going to be transferred freshly back into me. <laughs> um, there is a fresh embryo transfer and also a frozen embryo transfer, which obviously the frozen is when they do freeze the embryo and they have to thaw it out. Um, but yes, in this case, I was doing a fresh embryo transfer. And after the surgery, we collected a total of 23 eggs. 21 of them was mature and I believe... 12 of them were fertilized and we had a total of eight embryos. So when your egg is fertilized, they give them about five days to grow. And then by day five is normally when they become an embryo. Um, sometimes they give the fertilized egg slash embry embryo an extra day. And that's what ended up happening, happening with two of ours. We had a total of eight embryos. Um, two of them were a little behind, so we did give it an extra day. Uh, so come day five, I go back in and I had the embryo transferred back inside of me. So before we do the transfer, um, I can't remember exactly what day it was, but I was on medication because now we're trying to like tell my body that I'm pregnant and an embryo is going to be inside of me. So I was on two different medication. I was on an estradiol pill and a endometrian um a suppository which is a progesterone and I had to do those three times a day and on day five we transferred my embryo this embryo was a 4AA grading um, gradings don't always matter um, you can do a PGS testing which grading wouldn't even matter uh, when it comes to that uh, PGS testing will um, test your embryo and they will see if they are uh, genetically or chromosomal chromosomally normal um, I, I'm not exactly sure if that's the correct word. I believe it is, but um, they will pretty much eliminate all of the embryos that are not um, eligible for transfer. So we chose not to PGS test our embryos. Our doctor wasn't really for it. He said that the success rate for PGS testing wasn't quite high enough in his book to uh, recommend us to doing it, especially since we were both so young and there was nothing wrong with us. And then obviously my stemming and the growth of all of my fertilized eggs turning into embryos looked amazing. He wasn't really recommending it. So we didn't and uh, we went, we proceeded with our fresh transfer. When it came down to our transfer, um, they didn't have really much instructions for me afterwards. Um, all I had to do was take it easy the first day and then I can like proceed normal duties the following day. Um, I took it easy the first day. I ate some soup. Um, a lot of uh, girls on YouTube would say they did bed rest. They kept eating warm foods. Um, they stayed hydrated. Uh, so many different things. I know with this first transfer, I did do a lot of like pomegranate juice because I heard that was really good. Um, I was eating a lot of oatmeal just because I heard it had a lot of good benefits. Yes, yeah, so I did a, like a few things specifically for the transfer that some women had like success with. So I know pomegranate juice was one of them. I think it's about nine days later, you do a beta test, which they test to see the levels of your hormones. And if you're pregnant, obviously. <laughs> I was feeling pretty optimistic. I felt like I got this, um, it's gonna be positive but I was so scared too leading up to it because I had, of course, so much weight on my shoulders. I was scared what if it wasn't gonna be positive because then I was gonna disappoint so many people. And um, that is a lot of pressure. And at the same time, I was still so upset that we had to do IVF. I didn't mention this in the beginning, but throughout my entire IVF cycle, I had a brave face. Um, 
I was still pretty upset that we ended up having to do IVF. I never, ever in my wildest dreams thought that IVF was going to be in the cards for us. I thought that I would eventually just get pregnant naturally and I wished, prayed, hoped that's, that's what was going to happen for us and it didn't. I was so angry. I was so upset that we were spending all this money that we could have saved for something else like our baby. Um, but instead we were spending all this money on fertility treatments. I didn't, it wasn't fair. And I can get so emotional just thinking back to how I was feeling because it, it wasn't fair. And we wanted to be parents so bad. So when it came down to me getting my beta test done and it was negative, I was just so upset that it wasn't something that came easy for us and so many people get pregnant so easily and it's not that I didn't think they deserved it which I all I was always so happy more than happy for all of my family and friends that were getting pregnant but it was really hard to be around that and obviously it wasn't working out for us once it came down to the day that I had my beta test done I got the call from my nurse and she said that it was a negative. It was really hard hearing that and I was crushed. Like I felt so defeated and I, f I was really low. I know that I was questioning even continuing IVF, even trying to get pregnant. I, I know that I was even saying that I probably wasn't meant to be a mom. It was really hard for a few days so the next step was having a phone consultation with my doctor it wasn't gonna be for a few weeks so um, I just kind of had to hang in there and once the day came my doctor was amazing and he just he cheered me right up and he told me that is very common that your first transfer isn't successful and a lot of times the second one is more successful he told me that we uh, that we had no no issues in there's no reason why we couldn't get pregnant he said my whole stemming process was beautiful he said that my eggs fertilized and grew into embryos wonderfully he thought that our second transfer was going to end in a much better result uh we ended our consultation um with getting us back on the ivf waiting list and I was excited. I was really looking forward to this. And after I got off the phone with him, I don't know, like something just hit me. I don't know if it was an epiphany or what, but I just really wanted to focus on myself, on me, my body, my health. Um, I wanted to be in a very clear mind, positive mindset. I ended up removing a lot of people from my life, um, putting a lot of friendships on hold while I got through this um I just felt like it was something that I had to do um I did a lot of focusing on myself like I said I was just pampering myself more doing like baths doing a somewhat of a at-home spa day once a week uh taking it really easy only speaking to people that brought positivity into my life i i literally eliminated all negativities like people that i couldn't handle were on pause <laughs> by the end of december we had already scheduled our frozen embryo transfer it was set for april and this one was a little different than a fresh transfer since we already have embryos and they were frozen the frozen transfer consisted of only three appointments compared to <laughs> the full-on cycle which consisted of like uh, I don't know maybe eight appointments or more um, the first appointment was going to be pretty much just to check everything my ovaries and making sure that my uterus is looking good and again I was on birth control until they needed me to come off of it so controlling my cycle and um, the second appointment I believe was just before I came off of birth control and that was going to be the okay girlfriend you can get started on your medications because we are going to definitely move forward with this transfer. Um, IVF is so crazy because 
you can be perfectly healthy nothing's wrong with your reproductive systems but once you're on medications or whatnot and obviously there's these appointments for a reason so they can make sure that you know your lining's looking good you don't have polyps yeah there's these appointments so they can check that there's nothing wrong that's going to pause you from moving forward with, with your transfer i was really lucky i had no issues at all which is probably why my doctor was really ho hopeful for our second transfer both my transfers were very smooth um and worked out really well apart from the first one with the failed transfer for frozen embryo transfer i was on a total of five different medications i was on the two that i was on for my first transfer and then i was also on I have my vlog post <laughs> up on my laptop because I wrote everything down here. And I was on estradiol pills, endometrial suppositories, and then I was on uh, dexamethasone pills, estradiol patches, which the patches were um, once, uh, once a week. I would switch them off. And then progression and oil injections. I'm not going to go into details on how many times I took those medications. I don't think it matters. But come the day of the transfer, I was so excited. I was just so ready to finally have this embryo back inside of me where it should be. And I was so positive. I days leading up until this transfer I remember always saying like it's gonna work it's gonna work like I had this feeling that it was gonna work during my second appointment uh, my doctor was even talking about which embryo we were going to transfer and the nurse ended up confirming that we were going to be transferring a 5BA embryo which was my little Lucy leading up to the transfer I did um, I ate I think I was eating Brazilian nuts because I heard that those are good for your transfer. I think I was still doing the pomegranate juice. I think I was eating avocados. I had a whole list of stuff that I was doing and I wish that I saved it, but I already deleted it off my phone. I, uh, But uh, those were some of the things that I definitely did leading up to the transfer and also after the transfer up until uh, my beta test. So the day we did the transfer, I remember I was so at peace. like. I was so ready for this moment. I could not wait to finally get this embryo transferred into me. Um, the appointment went really smooth. The sucky part of the only sucky part of this appointment is the fact that you have to drink tons of water and they need to do the transfer on a full bladder. And the first time around, I don't remember being in so much pain, but the second time, um, my bladder was so full i had to pee so bad and they were just taking forever i remember i wanted to cry so bad and even during the transfer uh rudy was recording it and taking photos like you can see a stream of a teardrop that fell that was just like running down my face because i had to pee so bad and normally after you transfer the embryo i've heard a lot of women say they like to lay down for about five to ten minutes after the transfer to really ensure that embryo is going to stay up there where it's supposed to be after i was done i had to get dressed and get to the bathroom i couldn't get there fast enough and i took the longest pee ever <laughs> tmi just reflecting back on my um blog post because i wrote i did write everything there and i'm gonna have that linked down below so before the embryo was transferred, we met with the embryologist who thawed out the embryo and was pretty much um, keeping an eye on it through the day until our appointment. Um, he told us that our embryo did great. Not all embryos um, survive the thawing process and if so, they do tend to lose like some cells. So they might have been like 100 at one point and after thawing, they could have lost um, some of it and maybe be a 75. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that works. But anyways, our embryologist said that our embryo did amazing through the thawing out process and it remained at a 100% um, success rate or lifespan. I'm not sure. But that just gave me so much more reassurance that this was it. Um, I was so emotional on our ride home because I just knew this was going to be our baby this embryo was going to be the embryo that finally stuck 
Um, I did bed rest for three days. Rudy took off um, time from work so that way I didn't do anything but lay in bed. I ate warm foods. I normally like really cold water but after this transfer I made sure to just drink like, drink, like room temp water. Um, embryos don't like cold and they don't like fragrances. I stayed away from fragrances. I just really took it easy and just stayed at a great positive mindset and I don't know what did it, what didn't. Um, so many people can say they did this, they did that and that's what worked for them but then another person might say well I did the same thing and my embryo didn't stick, I didn't get pregnant. So that's what's so difficult when it comes down to IVF for embryo transfers. I just know that this one worked and we got pregnant after this transfer. During the two week wait leading up to my beta test, I, I'm i not sure how many days, five days post transfer, that's what it was. Um, I wasn't feeling any different. I wrote, I was feeling a little bit of cramping, which is normal after you do a transfer because they insert a catheter inside of you. And um, I know I was feeling tired, but also the medications you're on is like a hormone medication. So it kind of gives off like the feeling of you're pregnant. But the only thing was at nighttime, the difference between the first time and this time at nighttime, I started spotting. I was really nervous and I got scared that maybe I was starting my period because normally after the two week wait whether you're pregnant or if you're not pregnant is usually around the time you should be beginning your period and that's when they would tell you once they receive your beta results they'll tell you to stop medication if you're not pregnant. I started spotting. The next day I woke up, we ran errands, I remember we went to the grocery store, we came back and I was still spotting and I was getting a little bit more nervous if I was going to start a period. So I remember that morning I took one of my dollar store pregnancy tests and that was the first time that I got the slightest, slightest faint positive. I never ever in my life got a positive ever. So I I didn't I could I didn't even know what I was looking at. I couldn't believe it. I was in somewhat denial. Um, I even asked Rudy like, do you see a second line here? And he said, yes, he did. So I was like, well, whatever. The first transfer I did not test at home because I wanted to just get my results from my nurse. Um, there's a lot of like mixed stories. You shouldn't test at home because you can get a false positive, a false negative, this and that. And I was just like, I'll, I'll wait. For the second transfer, I wanted to test at home. I had decided I would be testing the day before the beta test because I wanted to be prepared. The first time I was completely blindsided and I did not want that to happen again. And obviously I was scared whether to take the test at home because I didn't want to get a false result either. But I felt like for my own sanity, I needed to do this. The morning before my beta, my beta test, I already knew I was going to be testing and I was so extremely nervous. I woke up so early, couldn't fall back asleep and I took my test and it was a positive. I think I took like four tests that morning and it was positive and the next day I had my beta and they confirmed I was indeed pregnant. And after you do um, your beta, and if your numbers are rising, they want you to go back um, two days later to make sure your numbers are still rising and they're looking for your numbers to have at least doubled. And when I went back for that, mine had definitely more than doubled. I feel like we finally got everything we wanted. We were finally pregnant and we got our Lucy and she's just made so many of my dreams come true. She's, she is magic. I really hope I didn't forget anything. Um, this was almost two years ago that we did IVF. Um, we are actually coming real close to when we did begin our frozen embryo transfer with Lucy and ended up getting pregnant. So I feel like I may have forgot a lot of stuff. I hope not. If anything, I will leave uh, what I may have forgotten down below. But like I did say, I shared our whole fertility journey uh, from start to end on my blog and I will leave those links down below. This is all for today's video. I really hope everything made sense and I hope that this is something you enjoyed. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what else you'd like to see from me next. Uh, thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.